Hello and welcome to a new vlog and we are going ISS hunting tonight. The International Space Station is in a current phase where it's passing through our night skies and I captured it a couple of nights ago just there in the back garden and tonight I'm actually going to a location I've been to before for night photography, the windmill at Brill on the Hill. And what I'm going to do is I want to get a picture with the windmill and then the International Space Station coming sort of up over it. Now, one of the things I've been doing to plan this is I've been using a tool, an app called Photopills and another, there's another app, a website that I'm looking at now on this laptop called the the Photographer's Ephemeris, Ephemeris, Ephemeris. I don't know how to pronounce that but basically what it allows you to do is select a location and plan your photography based around that location so it tells you things like the angle of the sunrise sunset moonrise moonset etc etc now what I know about the International Space Station tonight is I know it's appearing in our skies at about five to eight I know that it's initial elevation so it's position in the skies at 10 degrees and I know it's going to go quite high, so it ends up somewhere like, well, peaks at about 80 degrees. So that's like high. 90 degrees is, is up vertical, then it goes really high. And I know that from where the windmill is, I think I can get a perspective of it coming up. So we'll be looking towards the back of the windmill and it will be coming up over the top of it. So how I've done that is I've used this website to look at the positions that I can be in and I can look at the angles of the space station so I can see that the space station is going to start at around 265 degrees and it's going to finish at about 80 degrees so based on that information I can see my position and I can see where the space station will be starting and, and sort of finishing as in going out of sight what that allows me to do is on a map of where this windmill is, is look at some different scenarios of places I might want to stand to get it in shot. Now, in my ideal world, I would stand with the windmill in front of me and this International Space Station going straight over the top, but because of the angle that it's approaching, that's not gonna be possible. So my real hope is that I can get the windmill and uh, almost the this ISS sort of coming up to the side of it and coming up, up overhead. Ideally, with the space station being visible for about four and a half minutes, according to the ISS app, I should be able to get a couple of shots. Because what I need to do is I'll set my timer, 10 second timer. So I'll wait for the ISS to get in shot, set my 10 second timer. That will then take a 30 second exposure. I'll look at what that's like, reposition my camera, another 10 second timer, another 30 second shot, and that's kind of like pretty much going to be my four minutes up. So I have to try and get there a little bit earlier to get set up, do some practice shots, and then hopefully catch the image. Because the challenge is with something like the ISS, you only get a couple of opportunities <laughs> to capture it and then it's it's gone. So I don't want to waste a, a, a trip to, um, to Brill. We're only 20 minutes up the road, but still I don't want to waste that. So I've planned it. I think I've got the angle. I will take you with me later on. It's about, it's just coming up for six o'clock, so it, I'll be leaving in about an hour and 15 minutes. Going, go and see what we can uh, take. And I'm hoping that this will be the first time I've captured the ISS with some context, with some awareness, with some sense of, of distances and, and something focal on the, uh, on the ground in front. So, wish me luck and um, yeah, let's go to Brill. Right, I have arrived at Brill. It's um, it's dark, isn't it? Where are my lights? <laughs> there we go. We are just in, just switching between nautical twilight and going into astronomical twilight. So the sky is blue, but still a reddy colour to it in the distance. Actually, I'm going to go out now, have a look at some of the uh, perspectives I'd thought about earlier. And uh, I've got 25 minutes, so I'm going to go out, get prepared, and then um, I'll probably come back to you once I've taken the shot and talk you through how I how I took it. Cool. Okay, it's um, about 10 minutes before the ISS comes over, and 
I found my spot. I've only looked at a couple of, of spots and um, behind the windmill, the space station should come up over the top of the windmill and right overhead. I've put my tripod down quite low, so I've gone, I've looked at it at sort of three settings, three heights on my my tripod and I, I want to go low so I give a maximum area to the sky. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to turn off my cannon now. I'm going to set that up on a tripod and I'm going to film. Uh, it's got a star sort of film mode, so I'm hoping that I can record the ISS coming over as well. So, um, yes, I'm going to go and look at that now. I found uh, the reason I've come down low as well is I've, I've sort of covering myself a bit from any cars that are driving past because there's a, there's a road next to me that runs through the village. So when I've only got kind of two op two opportunities probably to capture it, I don't want cars coming past and ruin it. So hopefully I'm a little bit protected from that. The test shots look okay. So now it's just a case of waiting and uh, seeing if we get the shot. So it's the ISS has just been overhead and it's fair to say that hasn't been a successful uh, shot. I had everything lined up and I think the angle at which the ISS came over, so it, it went so high but it was actually, it felt really distant so my first 30 seconds it's very, a very small tail and then obviously I had to wait for 30 seconds for the image to finish and then set it up again and then it's, it, it's a little bit distorted so then I got the second image not so happy with that turn the camera around to some houses in the background, <laughs> take another image, not very happy with that. It's fine, you know, it's, it's, um, photography is a learning process, it's not, you know, you think you're going to come out and take the world's, uh, the world's best shots, or even really decent shots all of the time, you're not when you're at my, my stage, so I, uh, I can at least go and reflect on what I could have done differently, actually, to get the shot that I actually wanted, so, um, so yeah, another sort of step in the experimenting and learning of photography. But all is not lost. I got some nice shots before it came over and it's a beautiful clear night. There's not a lot of um, light up here. We're going to full darkness. So I'm going to go and get some other uh, night images whilst I'm up here. It's not too cold tonight. It's quite nice. And um, see if we can get some other nice shots and make up for the disappointment. So yes, that's the way it goes, isn't it? Hey, never mind. Never mind. Right, welcome back to the studio where I'm going to show you a couple of the images that I took. Now, this was an image that I took while I was testing for the kind of composition for the space station. So I knew that the space station was, was kind of coming from this, this direction. And um, to give you an idea, so this this windmill is actually uh, just off the edge of a, a village. So just the other side of this hill, there are some, some houses. Round to the left of this shot here, there's like a car park and a pub and a road behind me. So as I said in the video, I sort of I came down low here to use these, these hills to protect from the car lights. But I love this shot and it, it, was, it got a good response on, on Instagram. I think because of the colours, right, you've got the kind of dark foreground you've got the the windmill which is really well lit and then you kind of got the sort of the lights of the city there and you go from this kind of blue into dark reddy sort of purple pinky then it goes really light and then we start moving up blue and then sort of darker as we as we get higher up so just some lovely colors here and do you know what in 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 in, in actually being there couldn't really make out much of this this red it was there when I, I first got in the car but by the time I was taking this shot it kind of felt pretty dark so really pleased with how this image came out so this was me kind of getting all set up for the ISS now this is the first shot I took with the ISS and I kind of I cropped away some of the foreground here but you can see the angle that it came up at now, what I was hoping, so obviously what I wanted was to show the ISS coming all the way up here. You've got Taurus here, you've got Pallides here, and I wanted it to come right up between those those stars. That was my hope with obviously some, some editing or some, some merging and stacking of, of images. I actually couldn't see the ISS. It wasn't visible to the naked eye until, you, until it was about here. So by the time I got my kind of 10 second, uh, you know, 10 second timer, 
and then the ISS for 30 seconds. That, you know, I was hoping to get a bit more, but what I then did in my panic was I took another shot, and by then the sort of ISS was up here, which was fine. However, I moved the camera and I cut off half of the windmill, which was a bit daft. So that's why I posted this image on Instagram. However, what I've been doing this evening is a bit of editing, and I actually managed with the, the, com the combination of the two shots to get the image that I wanted. Now, you could argue that it's been edited, so it's it's you know it's not as good as it as it would be if it was actually a a single uh, a single take. But a lot of these shots aren't single takes, right? So I'm kind of happy that I've now got a version of the shot I I wanted through editing of the the two images. And and again, it's quite nice, right? So I've got it coming up between Pallides, you know, that's Mars there, and then Taurus there. Kind of glow here, quite a bit of light pollution because that's Bista. This is where I. I live, so that's that sort of Bista, a biggish town in the in the background. There, so you do get a lot of light pollution. But anyway, so that was what I started with, with just a small streak, and then this is this is a bit of editing. After it had gone overhead, I then swiveled the camera around and managed to catch it here, just before it sort of fizzles out and goes over the, uh, I guess over the out of sight and over the the curve of of what's visible. And, you know, this is okay. There's a bit of lens lens glare there. I didn't hadn't notice that before, but I just noticed that. I kind of darkened these houses down a bit. And you can see, actually, that whilst this is a, a, a lovely location to shoot, but there are some houses, there are road lights, there are cars driving past, so it, it can be a bit noisy on the, on the light front. But anyway, I kind of like that, like that shot because it gives you some, some context with the houses there. And then once once all of that was was done, I went and, and just had some fun with some other images of the of the stars. And again, I just used used a long exposure to try and get as many stars as possible in the image, which was again a really nice shot. Bit of noise here again through that that light pollution. You just start to see some grainness through the image. But I don't think there's a, a great deal that um, that I can do about that necessarily. So um, yeah, so those were the kind of five images I wanted to show you there. I'll, I'll attach them to the end of the vlog. It was a fun night. It was good to be out and about. And, you know, I've learned, I've learned a bit. So it's all a, it's all a journey, isn't it? So thank you very much for watching. And until next time, bye-bye.